Hey y'all, Scott here. The Smash Brothers series has been the victim of countless leaks and rumors, as it's one of the most popular franchises ever constructed. With this popularity comes a thick stack of lame photoshopped farce, so I thought it'd be fun to take a look at most leaks and rumors involved with the franchise. So get ready to enter that realm of incompetency, cause we're gonna look at some garbage! Starting off humbly with Super Smash Bros. on the Nintendo 64, there weren't many rumors floating violently around for this one, mainly due to the modern internet being in its infancy at the time and this title being the first of the franchise. There are mainly two rumors associated with the game, the first being that various CPU controlled characters in the game were playable, these characters being Master Hand, the Fighting Polygons, Giant Donkey Kong, and Metal Mario. These characters cannot be played as in the game without the aid of hacking, thus this rumor was significantly busted. There were also murmurings about characters originally planned to make their playable Smash Bros. debut in this game. Peach, Wario, Meowth, Pit, Bowser, King Dedede, and Mewtwo were all rumored to be planned for Smash 64. However, Bowser, Dedede, and Mewtwo are the only characters that were officially planned for the game. Bowser and DDD actually had a fair amount of work done on them, but they were scrapped possibly due to time constraints. With Mewtwo, it's actually unknown if any work was done on him at all. Meowth was rumored to have been scrapped in favor of Jigglypuff, but there was never any evidence suggesting Meowth was even planned for the game. Sigurd from Fire Emblem was also rumored to have been planned, but this is a pretty baseless rumor, no factual evidence of this actually exists. However, Marth was considered for Smash 64, but was not fully realized due to time constraints. The rumor of Pit being planned also came with a little dollop of insider info that he was scrapped due to the complications with animating his wings. However, Push Dustin from Source Gaming makes a great point that this would have easily been brought up by Sakurai when Pit was revealed for Brawl. Hello everybody and welcome to Critique That Leak, the first game show since Are You Smarter Than 5th Grade to exploit preteens, but this time with their Photoshop skills. Critique That Leak is brought to you by Concrete Matter. There's nothing better to start your day off with. Concrete Matter! Well, let's critique some leaks! Welcome back! Our first leak here is the Notorious Rayman DLC leak. This was released around February 2015, and nobody really debunked this when it came out. In fact, Ubisoft even said they were going to make a statement about this, because a bunch of outlets started coming out to them and saying, like, Hey, is this real? Do you have anything to comment on this? Ubisoft was originally going to make a statement, and then the person behind the leak came out and said, I did this, this is fake, and that was Artsy Omni of Smashified. And this was actually a promotional stunt to advertise his YouTube show, Smashified, in which he and other artists take much beloved and very anticipated characters for Smash Brothers and, you know, makes them in a Smash 4-esque style to basically show what their render would look like in Smash Brothers. So overall, I don't really have anything to critique about this leak. It was so well done that nobody really was able to debunk it until it was debunked by the leaker itself. So. I'm pretty okay with this. No critique for this leak. No. Double no! I'm actually quite a big fan of this leak. This is basically showing that as DLC, a classic classic mode was gonna come, which basically mimicked the entirety of Smash 64's classic mode. Uh, I like it. I didn't know the E3 demo for Smash Brothers was supposed to be a mess. Whoa, hold on there, buddy. There's a demo for the DLC? Dude, you're gonna get slaughtered out there. This is some high class information. What are you doing leaking this? Moving abruptly over to Melee, this is where rumors really start to crank up a bit. One of the biggest rumors pertaining to Melee is Sonic and Tails being unlockable fighters. This rumor was brought to us by Electronic Gaming Monthly, and it is said that if one would frighteningly defeat 20 enemies in Cruel Melee, they would be treated to a fight with Sonic and Tails and winning would obviously unlock them. Many believe this report by EGM to be true, however EGM was notorious for their April Fools pranks, and this was merely another one of them. Alas, Sonic was close to being featured in Melee, but due to time constraints, it failed to happen. Geocities.com reported that Toad was an unlockable after achieving a perfect score in the credits minigame, completing adventure mode afterwards while defeating all the Yoshis in the Mushroom Kingdom section. However, this was easily disproven. All the screenshots Geocities provided were edits of the Toad model from adventure mode. Some speculated that three characters prominently featured in Melee's opening cinematic were considered, planned, or scrapped as playable characters. However, Ridley, Wolf, and Samurai Goro were actually never any of these. Wario was heavily considered for Melee, so much so that Sakurai has stated that if he could create one more character for the game, it would have been Wario. However, many misquote him here and have reported Sakurai considered Wario to be a clone of Mario, but deciding against this, as Wario deserved better. There's actually no evidence of Sakurai ever saying this. Meta Knight's render is basically the same as Brawl's leak harder next time. We got a pick up the ice climbers in action here, but why do they take a picture of the gamepad? There's probably like a really nice TV in this room too, and he decides to pick a picture of the gamepad. I got nothing. Shit! This is beautiful. 
So it looks pretty good until you realize Ness is Lucas from Brawl and that is Diddy Kong's render from Tropical Freeze. I'm sorry. This is a bit of a neat leak because this was actually released after Mewtwo was announced as DLC but before Lucas was announced as DLC so it's kind of interesting to see that the leaker actually really did predict two of the first DLC characters for Smash Brothers 4. However, here's the thing, I believe some pretty crazy stuff but that is just preposterous! Brawl is not only much more riddled with speculation and rumors, but leaks now as well, with the internet being a more prominent entity during the development of the game. During a supposed radio interview with Sakurai, it was revealed that Ridley, a cell shaded Link a la Wind Waker, and Bowser Jr. were playable characters, while Young Link, the Ice Climbers, and Mr. Game & Watch were all cut from the roster. This was just wrong. Also, nowadays, this would have been debunked immediately. Masahiro Sakurai is the Grand Minister of Secrets and actually takes pride in the surprise and celebration of new Smash characters. It just wouldn't make any sense for him to reveal three big newcomers over a radio show, especially when the Smash Dojo was up and running, a blog in which Sakurai revealed new elements and characters for Brawl. At the Wabi Game Festival in Japan, it was reported that a playable demo of Brawl housed unrevealed assist trophies of Rosalina from Super Mario Galaxy, Duster from Mother 3, and Muddy Mole from Mole Mania. These rumors were shot down, however, as many others who played the demo did not see these assist trophies, and evidence of these characters in Brawl's code is nowhere to be found. After Snake was revealed for Brawl, Sakurai said there was a possibility that one or two more third-party characters could appear. This cranked up speculation after Sonic was revealed, as there was still a potential one other third party. Many thought of Capcom's Mega Man as the final third-party rep, however, Snake and Sonic were the only outsiders in Brawl. Before DLC became a prominent feature in the series with Smash 4, it was heavily rumored to be in Brawl. A fake website popped up online mimicking a Nintendo press release. The We Want More service was detailed, stating that four new characters and two new stages were on their way to Brawl, alongside new content for Mario Kart Wii, The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess, Fire Emblem Radiant Dawn, and Metroid Prime 3 Corruption. The new content was going to drop on May 13th, 2008, it was fake. Due to the Wii's incredibly minuscule storage capacity and rough online, DLC for Brawl was considered but never came to fruition. Apparently Brawl was the last Smash game, what unfortune! With taglines claiming one Brawl to end them all and Sakurai reportedly saying Brawl was the last game, many had a hearty dose of right to believe Brawl was the swan song of the franchise. Alas, the tagline was simply referring to how grandiose Brawl was, basically saying this game is so big it could be the final one! And Sakurai actually said he was making Brawl as if it was the last game, packing in as much content and fan service as humanly possible. Most major leaks for Brawl weren't treated as legitimate by many at all when they first appeared. Most users who posted potential information about Brawl were generally shunned for being stupid, dumb, stupid, and wrong. Chaos Zero was a GameFAQs user who had insider info about Brawl in October of 2007. His leak included the return of Falco, Ganondorf, Captain Falcon, Ness, and Sheik, the inclusion of Wolf, Lucario, and Sonic, Mewtwo getting axed, the Dragoon as an item, Stage Builder, and Final Destination returning. Nyase Nya held notoriety for being obsessed with Peach on Smashboards, however he did have information pertaining to Brawl before it was released. He stated that Brawl would have 35 characters, if one would count characters with transformations as one character each, Alamar and Toon Link being included, Mr. Game & Watch, Ness, and Captain Falcon returning, the exclusion of the much-desired Ridley and Mega Man as playable characters, the game being delayed and released on a dual-layered disc, and the date Sonic would be revealed on. Nobody believed him, with a user even editing his post claiming he was lying and locking the thread. Shadow Zor was able to test Brawl and revealed some information via Smashboards, being the inclusion of Rob and the return of Marth, Ness, and Captain Falcon. However, most did not believe this information due to Rob already being revealed as an enemy in the Subspace Emissary. Lucario, Jigglypuff, and Ness were accidentally prematurely shown in a promotional video for Brawl on January 21st, 2008. Stickers are highlighted showing compatibility with said characters, confirming them to be playable. However, the video was taken down shortly after it was posted. I'm so sad. This is actually an April Fool's prank. That is Nestor, a character that originated from Nintendo Power Magazine. So surely, this can't take a critique. But Jesus, man, what's up with that background? It looks like they got the tools from Michaels to make that thing. I dig the GameCube-style polygonal model they're sporting here. Not bad. Ooh, a mystery character! Too bad the other characters look like garbage! I like this one. This one's good. This one's actually really good, I like this one. 
Watch out, Mario! He's behind you! This was apparently gonna be Mewtwo in the subspace Emissary and Brawl, and this looks better than most of the Smash 4 leaks today. This was made in Brawl's era. Why? This was released before Sonic and Pac-Man were announced for Smash Bros. 4, and get this, I've seen worse. Come on, man, these are literally trophies from the game. But I will give extra points for Chibi Robo in there. This one ain't half bad. I love angles. Wanna see a tragedy unfold in 12 seconds? You see, the Adventure Mode button is garish enough to fit into Smash 4's hodgepodge of a menu system, but that character select screen needs to go away and think about what it's done. This league is actually supposed to mimic what Smash 4 would be like if it was an arcade game, and I actually like this one. It looks very clean and it looks very professional. I dig. Wow, I'm gonna have to call the real patrol on this one, because this is too real. Smash 4 is really when we get down to the knit riddle grit. Announced in 2011, Smash 4 definitely had the most rumors and leaks of any Smash game, no question. One of the first major rumors was titled Super Smash Bros. Universe. Posted on 4chan, the document details tripping being removed and more third-party representatives and reveals the title to be Super Smash Bros. Universe, both with English and Japanese logos. However, Sakurai made it clear that Smash 4 would not start development until the completion of Kid Icarus Uprising, which was around six months away from releasing at the time of this leak. Super Smash Bros. Memories! It's a 3DS game with a focus on retro characters. Playable characters include Pac-Man, Mock Rider, Stanley the Bugman, and Dig Dug. The Wii U's title was not disclosed, however it should be focused more on modern characters. Thanks, Zelda Informer! This rumor circulated in early 2012, and I hate to break it to you guys, but it's more of a probability than a possibility this was fake. On December 12, 2012, a supposed Namco employee going by the username Halibutend claimed the next Smash game would be revealed via Nintendo Direct on Brawl's 5th birthday, January 31st, 2013. Newcomers set to be revealed were Takamaru, King K. Rule, Little Max, Shulk, Ridley, Dylan, Girahim, a Platinum Games character, possibly being Wonder Red, and a Debu, possibly a character from a rumored Yoshi game, potentially being Yoshi's Woolly World. Stages were also planned to be revealed, these being Starship Mario from Super Mario Galaxy 2, Giant Chasm from Pokemon Black version 2 and White version 2, Pushmo Park from Pushmo, and Cookie Country from Kirby's Return to Dreamland. Of course, the date of the speculated direct came and went, meaning Halibutan faded into the realm of irrelevancy. One of the most well-known potential leaks in Smash Bros. history was the Gamatsu leak. I say potential because we still don't know if the leaker behind this was partially right or just had some luck encrusted guesses. E3 2013 rolls around and before the Nintendo Direct premiered, Gamatsu got a tip that the characters of Villager, Mega Man, Wii Fit Trainer, Pac-Man, Little Mac, and the Miis were to be playable in Smash 4. The first three were then subsequently revealed as playable characters, and while Villager and Mega Man were somewhat safe guesses, nobody ever expected Wii Fit Trainer, giving this leak a thick honkin' supply of credibility. By February of 2014, all the new characters, with the exception of Rosalina and Luma, were correctly predicted by the Gamatsu leaker. When the Smash Bros. Direct in April 2014 was approaching, Gamatsu received yet another tip from the leaker, stating that Pac-Man and the Miis were still a go and were to be revealed later, while confirming the existence of Krom, the Chorus Kids, Palutena, Shulk, and a Pokemon from X and Y as playable characters. At the tail end of the Smash Direct, Greninja, a Pokemon from X and Y, was revealed. E3 2014 comes and Miis, Palutena, and Pac-Man come alongside it. At this point, almost everybody believes the Gamatsu leak. In July 2014, Sakurai reveals plans to introduce a new Challenger trailer via a livestream. Many believe the trailer was to be Shulk, with Monolith Soft retweeting the announcement of the livestream and the Gamatsu leaker sending an email stating, I only know what has been done, not what or when they will be made available. Sakurai may change his mind, and he does all the time. Shulk will not be changed. However, not only was the leaker wrong about Shulk, the leaker was wrong about Krom. The trailer showcased the new Fire Emblem reps being Robin and Lucina, with Krom only being a part of Robin's final smash. Gamatsu never got any word from the leaker since, and it is still unknown if they actually had insider information for some of the leak, or just made everything up. In early 2014, a few pictures were shared online, which showcased 3DS screenshots of Palutena and Mario on Battlefield. 
At the time, nobody really debunked the supposed leak. Sakurai even shared a statue of Palutena as his Miiverse pick of the day, suggesting that Sakurai knew about the picture. Later that June, Palutena was officially confirmed as a character in Smash 4, however her model differed slightly from the leak. In the end, it turned out the initial leak was just a well done hoax. A few months before Super Smash Bros. for Wii U launched, a rumor was floating around forums typically coined as the Tower of Smash Leak. This detailed the functionality of linking the 3DS version to the Wii U version and gaining additional playable characters being Ridley, Chorus Men, Dixie Kong, Mewtwo, and Impa. The rumor stated that all characters in stages would be unlocked from the start. The leaker returned later with a full stage list. This added some credibility to the leaker as a few stages were revealed that correlated with the leak. With the 3DS offering Smash Run as its exclusive mode, this rumor detailed the Wii U's mode being Tower of Smash. The Tower of Smash was supposed to be a 100 level gauntlet in which the player was to go through 100 levels of the tower, playing a match on each floor with different rule sets. This was a relatively believable rumor, however, it was dismissed after some discovered a screenshot of the Wii U character select screen, showing some characters that have yet to be unlocked, such as Falco or Mr. Game & Watch. Hey! Based on my indecision on whether to make this a game show or a talk show, we have a caller! You're on the air! Hey Scott, long time caller, first time listener. Leaky Steve? Our leaker on the field? What are you doing here? I can't help myself, man. I'm gonna start leaking if I can't help myself. Oh no, here I go again! Wait a minute, Leaky Steve. Are you sending us an exclusive leak? Sure I am. Now I trust you with every potential leak, Leaky Steve, but I think you're gonna have to prove yourself to our loyal audience. All right, fine. Just in case you guys don't trust me, here's a picture of my foot to prove that I'm real. Is this how all leakers take pictures? I better scram. I've shown too much, but I'll send you that leak eventually. August of 2014, that leak happened. The biggest leak in Smash Brothers history. On August 19th, a user posts a picture going through every Smash Brothers character to date, alongside new ones with X's over characters that were to be cut from Smash 4. The only exception was Mewtwo, who had a question mark over his picture. Then, Mr. Motherfucking Leaker swoops in and just vomits this garbage out. The entire character select screen, stage select, the menus, everything was revealed. Now, I remember when this leak came out and I personally didn't buy it at first. I thought to myself that people can do amazing things and with 3D modeling becoming more and more doable by your average Joes, some people can perfectly recreate Nintendo style. Of course, this train of thought was just a waste of energy. Many attempted to disprove the leak, pointing out inconsistencies, such as the thicker line down here. However, this was actually more so adding credibility to the leaks, as that's just something that the 3DS character select screen does. The placement of the clones and Yoshi were questioned, many thought Shulk was simply an edited picture of Little Mac, some believe Wario's right pupil was missing, these inconsistencies were all either false or just another reason to hop on Masahiro Sakurai's wild ride, that character placement still irks me! A scan from Famitsu was later released showcasing the Tomodachi life stage which correlated heavily with the picture of the stage shown on the leak, revealing angles of the apartment that weren't seen before. About a week later from the original leak, video was posted online showing Shulk, Bowser Jr., Ganondorf, Charizard, and Lucina all in action. While some were grasping onto the hope that this was just an impressive brawl hack, most had come to the conclusion that the leak was real. On top of this, a solid 12 gallons worth of screenshots were unloaded onto the internet, showing trophies, menus, and so much more of the game. Interestingly, a trophy of Tharja from Fire Emblem Awakening was shown in the leak, but this trophy doesn't appear in the final game. Due to the suggestive nature of Tharja as a character, her trophy may have been removed to avoid rating complications. Finally, on August 29th, Shulk was revealed at the beginning of a Japanese Nintendo Direct, sporting the exact same render as the leak. This entire ordeal stemmed from a video Nintendo sent to the ESRB to rate the game, and oh boy oh boy this was a doozy! During a Smash 3DS intro video posted on Nintendo's Japanese YouTube page on August 29th, Ganondorf was accidentally revealed in an off-screen indicator. This video was removed and re-uploaded with the scene edited. Before the Smash Bros. 50 Fact Extravaganza video was live-streamed, Amazon.com leaked multiple new features contained in the Wii U version of Smash 4. These features included the all-new Stage Builder, Master and Crazy Orders, and Smash Tour. Around the time Mewtwo was released as DLC, data miners discovered the victory and stage themes for Roy from Fire Emblem and Ryu from Street Fighter within the update data. This led to speculation on whether this was just thrown in there for a few laughs and chuckles, or these characters were actually going to be DLC. Well, before E3 2015 was about to kick off, Nintendo scheduled a Smash Bros. livestream in which Masahiro Sakurai would reveal new content coming to the game. 
A mere day before the livestream commenced, an update was put out for Smash Brothers too early and data miners were able to look through it. Within the file, they were able to find the classic mode victory cinematic for both Roy and Ryu, confirming their place as DLC characters. People were then able to hack the game to play as these characters before their announcement, alongside playing on DLC stages such as Dreamland 64 and Suzaku Castle. This spoiled almost the entirety of the livestream, as this was the majority of the content revealed. The update was then released directly after the stream. That should do it for today. Of course, I didn't cover every single Smash Brothers leak and rumor ever conceived, but I mainly wanted to focus on the major ones and a few of the smaller ones here and there, so I think we covered that pretty well. Of course, if you remember a specific Smash Brothers leak or rumor back in the day, please leave a comment down yonder. And while I wait for said comment, Leaky Steve ended up sending me this big Smash Brothers leak, so I gotta check it out. No way! Hey y'all, Scott here, and have you heard? Benito Mussolini faked his death and is making a comeback this E3 in the form of a reboot. Just a rumor though, I would tell you to take it with a grain of salt, but this rumor deserves at least a shaker full of that stuff, because I have some pretty trustworthy sources. With E3 going forth with the classic happening right now tactic it always seems to pull this time of year, I think it's high time to take a look back at just a few E3 rumors from the past few years. Have you ever thought that fanfiction just wasn't doing it for you and you need more canon in your life? Well, back during the lead-up to E3 2012, the Paul Gale Network reported your dreams coming true as a Star Fox and Metroid crossover was supposedly in the works for the up-and-coming Wii U at the time. Apparently, Retro Studios was developing it and the game would combine the two franchises' gameplay styles. Basically, you play a Star Fox level, you play a Metroid level over and over again, that would be it. The game's story would follow the Star Fox gang as they accidentally crash into Samus' ship, leaving her stranded on another planet. Samus' game play would closely resemble that of Metroid Prime, and the Star Fox missions would retain the aerial, on-rail, and all-range forms of gameplay the series is known for. And get this, it was fake. The rumor was initially reported on May 19th, 2012, and was put to rest about a week later. The source of the rumor stated that the game was not in active development, and instead was a pitch to Nintendo that they may have considered, but later decided against. Wow, with just one E3 rumor out of the way, I'm now, only 20 years after doing the whole birth thing, finding my calling. I'm a born leaker! I should start nurturing my douchey side and lie to everybody by making a fake leak. Well, let's take a look at a few more E3 rumors, and while we do so, I'll be chipping away at this fake leak of mine. Does anybody remember PlayStation All-Stars Battle Royale? I would give you a minute to look it up in your local history book, but we gotta get through these pronto. It was basically Sony's answer to Smash Brothers. The game did okay, selling over 1 million copies, but nowhere near as much as the competing Smash Brothers series. Listen, I love a lot of the IPs within the PlayStation brand, but these franchises just don't fit together as well as the franchises in Smash Brothers. Probably because a metric 98% of the characters in Smash Brothers were created around the same time and by the same people slash company, but Whatever. Alas, around E3 2014, a sequel was rumored to be unveiled at Sony's press conference. PlayStation All-Stars Round 2 was apparently going to be released as a PS4 and PS3 game, and the only possible character that would have been featured in the game we know about was a Moogle from Final Fantasy. Well, that never happened. Nintendo is bringing in the hardest core with Acid Ghost, a mature Wii U game presented by Eminem in a pre-recorded video to be shown at E3 2012. Yeah, it was fake. You gotta understand, the lead-up before the Wii U's big second reveal at E3 2012 was massive. So many rumors were flying around beforehand about crazy games Nintendo was gonna show off to prove the worth of the Wii U. We got a bunch of ports, new Super Mario Bros. U, Pikmin 3 that was more than a year off, and Nintendo Land to round it all out. Definitely one of the more disappointing E3s Nintendo's had. Hello everybody and welcome to Critique That Leak, the first game show to implement the per leak measurement. For example, we're getting cancelled per 5 leaks and my god this is utterly terrifying to me. Let's critique some leaks! Today on Critique That Leak we're going to be taking a look at the dreaded Nintendo E3 lineup leaks. These leaks have definitely fallen in popularity, but were very prominent from 2013 to 2015. What these leaks are are nothing more than pieces of paper with words on them, sometimes forming coherent titles for games. Not always though. This is one of the most low effort leaks you can pull off, let's see how convincing some of these sound. Hello Mr. Christ, I'm sorry to bother you, but I'm about to exclaim your name. Not anything personal, it's just this leak is gross. Alright, see you later man. Jesus Christ, this leak is horrendous. The format's alright, however this leaker did not try to make this leak seem legitimate at all. Instead of coming up with creative titles for new entries in the Paper Mario or Metroid series, they just wrote the franchise name with Temper in after them. And oh me, oh my, why are there so many new franchises without any names or even working titles? Critiqued. 
back when Resident Evil 7 was merely just going to be another Resident Evil 6. I say that because look at these logos compared to each other, plus the rumor was floating around before E3 2013, not even a year after Resident Evil 6. Thankfully this rumor blew away and we got a really cool Resident Evil 7 bringing the franchise back on track earlier this year. Remember when the Xbox One was a collaboration between arthritis and leprosy? It may have actually not been exactly that, however, it was definitely treated as such, so that made this supposed leaked Xbox One games lineup hopeful. This was leaked before E3 2013 and showcased games like Halo 5, Fable 4, a new Banjo-Kazooie game subtitled Grunty Land, and what seems to be Dead Rising 3, which was actually revealed at E3 2013 as an Xbox One exclusive launch title. Sadly, this leak was fake, and Fable and Banjo-Kazooie have yet to receive new installments on the Xbox One. Back before E3 2013, Nintendo announced that certain Best Buys would be holding special demo events showcasing games from their E3 booths. Those games turned out to be Super Mario 3D World, Mario Kart 8, Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze, and Wind Waker HD. You see, three of those games were announced at E3, so that makes the demo events much more compelling to go to. This leak says that you'd be able to play New Super Luigi U, Pikmin 3, Wonderful 101, and Wind Waker HD at the demo events. Not as compelling, especially because one of the games is just DLC. The last Nintendo was known for their disappointing ways, so while this leak had barely any effort put into it, it's more believable than others, I would say. Classic Nintendo at E3 2015, being dreadful and whatnot. See, before E3 2015, Nintendo fans had a lot of hope for what would be shown off at the show. This leak shows off things like F-Zero Charge, Pokemon Z, Fire Emblem Next, Star Fox Orbit, and two new Metro games. Well, I've seen worse in this format before. Metroid Prime 4 is one of the most rumored games before any E3. Every year I always see a rumor pop up about the potential for a new Metroid game, often a new Prime being revealed at E3. I heartily remember this picture being leaked before E3 2012, and for 2012 leak standards, I always thought this looked pretty decent. Nowadays, before E3 2017, there are rumors that two new Metroid games are going to be revealed. Yeah, I don't buy it. The PS4 Slim recently released just last year, and it is an obvious downgrade from the original design. Just my opinion, but it doesn't look nearly as good as the original PS4, which is unfortunate because both the PS2 and PS3's original Slim models eclipsed their first iterations. But the idea of a Slim PS4 has been floating around for decades slash a few years. Before E3 2015, a rumor went around about a potential PS4 Slim to be revealed at the show. Some leaked images came out of this report as well, and my god does it just look like concept art. However, I would take this compared to the PS4 Slim we got. I didn't know you could force cataracts this hard. And even then, if you decipher what these titles say, get ready for potential titles for fanfiction. Smash Bros. Blue Nightmare, Paper Mario Spotlight of the Thousand Year Door, Mario Strikers Epic, and even Wario Land 5 Upside Down. This is one of the first leaks of this kind I remember, and it's kind of spot on. Of course, it details GameCube Virtual Console, which is a myth, but it went over Star Fox, Zelda, Mario Party, which were all shown off at E3 2014. Of course, a lot of this wasn't and was obviously fake. Shit, that was five leaks. Let's finish it off with a hefty leak before Nintendo's E3 2013. Apparently Retro Studios was working on a reboot of Star Tropics for the Wii U. Mario Kart on Wii U is just a better Mario Kart 7. Zelda Wii U may have concept art, but may not. Mario's 3D Wii U game was tentatively titled Super Mario Retroverse U, was the biggest 3D Mario game yet and may involve work from Mario 2. And when asked if a certain Super Saiyan would be in Smash Brothers, they stated it hadn't been decided, but may happen. God! Alright, the Mario Kart Wii U was pretty spot on, and sort of Zelda Wii U, mainly because it wasn't there, and they said it may not be there. Super Mario Retroverse U. I don't care if it's supposed to be a working title. What's the point of having U at the end of a name that's already new? That's like if the development name for Mario 3D World was Super Mario 3D World U. It just doesn't make any sense. Also, out of all things to ask regarding Smash Brothers, why ask if Goku's gonna be in there? Lame. Alright, so that's just a few E3 rumors from the past few years, and I better hurry up and end it here because E3 2017 is happening, like, right now. But I still have to post my leak to 4chan. I constructed a potential menu screen for Super Smash Bros. for Nintendo Switch, just showing off Smash Run as a new mode and connectivity to the 3DS and Wii U to transfer trophies, custom characters, etc, etc. Now you might be saying, Scott, other people have made fake leaks for publicity before. Yeah, keep spewing that and make sure to tell me when I start paying attention. Oh, breaking news! God exists, and he's a pretty nice guy because I don't have to create an account to post on 4chan. Alright, so fuck! I realize Nintendo Network isn't a part of Nintendo Switch's infrastructure. And it looks like these people aren't having any of it. Well, let me just edit that out. There, now there's the real screenshot. Now they'll believe it's real.
Oh man, hey y'all, Scott here, and if you couldn't already tell, I had a crazy night last night. This lamp didn't stand a fucking chance. I was at a leak party. You could tell by the amount of bullshit in the air. It was crazy. There was Photoshop and overcompensation everywhere. But it got me to think, remember the good old days when the Nintendo Switch was merely just a bunch of forum posts and Photoshop trash? The Great Depression, huh? Absolutely adorable. You see, I was a Nintendo fan from 2015 to 2016. I know what true despair feels like, and yes, I do accept a gasp as a response. Picture this, Nintendo's release schedule is getting drier and drier by the second. Barely any games come out, and when they do, I mean, it was definitely a bit much to call them games in the first place. Nintendo was obviously giving up on their failing home console, the Wii U, and their successful handheld, the Nintendo 3DS, was still receiving games, albeit what felt like a lot of filler and older games finally being brought over from Japan, with some solid titles sprinkled in there. Nintendo wasn't announcing much, wasn't talking about the future enough, and it felt rainy. The only thing keeping us Nintendo fans hopeful was 8% of the English alphabet, NX. Nintendo announced the existence of a new home console they were developing codenamed NX all the way back in 2015, and for the next year and a half, the rumors and leaks were going effin' wild until it was formally unveiled as the Nintendo Switch on October 20th, 2016. And let me tell you, that was a satisfying day to be a fan. But let's take a look at the history of rumors and leaks that led up to the system's unveil. I'm mainly going to be focusing on the stuff prior to the Nintendo Switch reveal on October 20th, just because that's back when rumors were rumors and leaks were leaks, the good old days, slash I just think that's a good place to cap things off at. Starting things off in a little year I like to call 2014, a rumor surfaced in January detailing an upcoming Nintendo platform that was a hybrid between a handheld and a home console. The name was Nintendo Fusion, a solid name if I do say so myself. Nintendo actually owns the domain name NintendoFusion.com, however this was back in 2003 and was for a promotional music and video game festival Nintendo held from 2003 to 2006. The Fusion console was apparently two parts, named the Fusion DS and the Fusion Terminal, unlike the all-in-one the Nintendo Switch turned out to be. The specs were all listed, and from what it seems, the Fusion DS was like a luxury souped-up 3DS, complete with two motorized circle pads, 3G, GPS, thumbprint sensor, Bluetooth, the works, including a 3DS card slot. The Fusion Terminal was a console and was basically a souped-up Wii U. It could play Wii U games, 3DS games, and Fusion-specific games. It also came in two versions, one with a disk drive and one without a disk drive. It seems that both consoles would have interacted in some way, and the Fusion DS would have been a controller for the Fusion Terminal, in addition to the Fusion Terminal using Wii Remote controllers as well. I personally think this idea was a bit too overcomplicated. It's not easy to sell. Like, the Fusion DS and Terminal are two separate products, but I guess they work well together, but they don't seem to play the same games, and I think having a version with a disk drive and one without a disk drive is, get this, dumb. It just makes things way too confusing for the consumer. This obviously turned out to be false, but the idea of Nintendo combining their handhelds and consoles was definitely there before the Nintendo NX was even announced. And fast forward to March 17th, 2015 when the Nintendo NX was even announced at a shareholders meeting. <laughs> At this meeting, Nintendo unveiled their partnership with mobile game developer DNA to create mobile phone games based on their franchises. Nintendo decided to announce they were developing a new home console so then people didn't get the assumption that they were leaving the hardware business. However, they didn't reveal much about the upcoming hardware, not even if it was a handheld or a home console. They basically said, wait until next year. But that didn't stop the speculation station from opening its doors, as 2015 was the year that various patents were filed by Nintendo that many assumed were for the NX. A console with no disk drive, shoulder buttons that doubled as scroll wheels, and an oval controller that is fundamentally one big touchscreen with two analog sticks popped on. Hello everybody and welcome to Critique That Leak, the first game show to ever laugh in the face of continuity. Hello everybody and welcome to Critique That Leak, the first game show to implement the per leak measurement. For example, we're getting cancelled per five leaks and my god this is utterly terrifying to me. Let's critique some leaks! Of course a lot of this wasn't and was obviously fake. Shit, that was five leaks. My shuck glands are about to burst at the lack of continuity, what a riot! <laughs> the Nintendo NX received a fair amount of garbage fake junk trying to pass itself off as non-garbage fake junk, so let's take a look at some garbage fake junk, the first of which is the Nintendo XDS, uploaded around June of 2015. What you'll see is pretty self-explanatory, so stay tuned. Obviously, the leaker was trying to make this come off as a private presentation Nintendo was holding to people such as third-party developers or retail partners or whatever. But that is a voice clip of Bill Trennan taken from somewhere else. You didn't need to pop that in there. Not including the voice clip would have made this more convincing. Whoa, slow down there! I don't want the low-quality CGI patrol in my case. 
Regardless, the XDS seems to be a portable Wii U 3DS combo system. The use of the dual screens is definitely in the oddball arena, however. Like, why does it show the menu screen of Super Smash Bros. for Wii U on the bottom, but then the top screen shows gameplay? You can flip the screen around and make it a single screen experience, which is a neat concept. Overall, it's not a convincing video in the slightest, but not a bad one. September 2015, an interview was posted that apparently revealed a hearty dose of info about the NX. NX was a platform, one that would stretch across multiple devices, two of which would of course be a handheld and a home console. The handheld was to be unveiled in Spring 2016 and would release at the end of 2016 or at the very latest Spring 2017. The console was to not have a disk drive and would connect to the portable in a format similar to how the Wii U connected to the Wii U gamepad. Specs would be close to the PS4 and Xbox One and games would look better on the home console console, which would release a few months after the handheld. Games on the platform included Final Fantasy, Dragon Quest, Sonic, Metroid, F-Zero, a 3D Mario, and Zelda, it was fake. In October 2015, the Wall Street Journal reported that Nintendo began to distribute development kits for the system to third-party developers. Later in December, it was rumored that Nintendo was to showcase the NX behind closed doors at CES, which didn't happen. January 2016 rolls around and this is where leaks and rumors start coming in full force, but I find it interesting that the majority of the rumors in 2015 pegged the NX as a combo system, a separate handheld and console that work in tandem rather than a handheld you just plug into your TV. Cirque and Toto reported that Bandai Namco was in development of a fair amount of games for the NX, including Smash Brothers for the launch of the system. Now it was never clarified if it was a wholly new game in the franchise or an updated version of Super Smash Brothers for Wii U, but nevertheless, that happened it didn't. The NX was rumored to work alongside multiple devices including smartphones and even competing game consoles, specifically the PlayStation 4. Smartphones? Eh, kinda. In the Nintendo Switch, you can connect your Nintendo Network ID, which then tracks the friends you made on Nintendo Mobile games, and you can add them as friends on your Switch, and that's about it. PlayStation 4 compatibility? pa -lease. Analysts speculated that the portable console was to come first in 2016, and the console would come in 2017. Then reports started coming out that confirmed the device was both a handheld and a console, and development kits were starting to ship, which was reported by the Wall Street Journal in October. February 2016, it was rumored that the Nintendo NX was on par with the Xbox One in terms of raw power, and the device was a handheld that connected to the TV via a wireless HDMI dongle. I always thought that idea was really intriguing, and it is wholeheartedly possible. It would have used a similar technology used in the Wii U, where the Wii U streams video to the gamepad screen, except now the handheld would stream video to the TV. It was also reported by Super Metal Dave 64 that Final Fantasy 15 and the Final Fantasy 7 remake would make their way to the NX, which still hasn't happened but hey, who knows. The Nintendo Cross, Crucifixion's big comeback. It was released around the same time as the Nintendo XDS leak, and it takes a very similar form, being filmed as if it was a presentation or whatever. I do not like this concept, and it's also not a very professional looking video. So it's a console that plays Wii U and 3DS games, and you can stream them to your mobile device or Wii U gamepad. I mean, that's more of a nice bonus feature rather than a complete selling point. The controller included with the console is a hacked up Photoshop of the Wii U Pro Controller too. The image looks too pixelated to be official from Nintendo, and you can see the image was sloppily edited to have a transparent background. The lines look too effin' jaggy. So after all that, let me pick what exactly about this leak was fake. Yeah, that sounds about right. March 2016 was when Activision apparently was going crazy with support on the NX. Considering the Switch has been on the market for about a year and the only Activision game we've gotten is Skylanders, I think it's fair to say this rumor is bogus. It also details the new Call of Duty game for 2016, subtitled Bloodlines, was launching with the system, with Destiny following suit in 2017. The same guy who talked all that Activision garbage also brought forth a rumor of Luigi's Mansion 3 coming to the NX. Basically, this would be a technical showcase for the system, looking like a living 3D cartoon with an AR multiplayer mode shoved in there. Alright. Then some insider from NeoGAF said we'd get some info about the NX before E3, and oh boy the vague. I love the word info, that meant if the president of Nintendo happened to sneeze the word NX before E3, we couldn't say the insider was wrong. 
A user on Reddit posted in early April of 2016 some rumored info including the system being based on x86 architecture and would support the use of an additional screen. This was a relatively soft supply of info so it couldn't instantly be swatted down, however later on some people dismissed the rumor as false by reputable sources such as Emily Rogers, but we'll get to her in a bit, and a bit has totally happened and here comes Emily Rogers. A games journalist with loads of know-how and connections within the industry, Rogers played a big role in the NX rumors world and reported that NX would receive a few ports of Wii U games. Breath of the Wild, Splatoon, Super Mario Maker, and Super Smash Bros. This made a lot of sense, as Splatoon, Smash Bros., and Mario Maker had big online communities. It would have made sense to bring those games to the newest platform to keep those communities alive and talking about the games. Breath of the Wild also made sense just because it was the big new Zelda game still in development as Nintendo's next console was looming over. It just worked bringing it to the new platform in addition to the Wii U. Now that we have the Switch, the only one of these that has actually happened as of January 2018 has been Breath of the Wild. The other three may have been misinformation or haven't happened yet. Splatoon 2 launched on the Switch and could have started development as a part of the original, and Smash Bros. and Mario Maker could still happen, specifically Smash Bros., but personally I believe a sequel of Mario Maker is more likely than a port. A user on NeoGAF doubled down on this information regarding the Wii U ports, but also brought up that the NX would be more powerful than the PS4. Rumors about Breath of the Wild appearing on the NX persisted alongside some others. Emily Rogers struck again a few days later with reports on the latest Zelda game. She reconfirmed that Breath of the Wild would release on the Wii U and NX, while also throwing out there that the game would feature voice acting aside from the protagonist Link, and would allow you to choose between playing as a male or a female. All of this ended up happening except for the choice of gender, as series producer Eiji Onuma later confirmed that they thought about the idea, but later decided against it. Rumors and speculation were going crazy saying Nintendo would reveal the NX at E3 2016 and then would release that holiday, so Nintendo decided to throw that speculation out the window in late April confirming the NX would release in March of 2017. Breath of the Wild would release on NX and Wii U, and was also pushed from its initial 2016 launch to a vague 2017 one. However, Nintendo accidentally labeled the game with a March 2017 release date on their website, but later took that down and replaced it with simply 2017. To top it all off, Nintendo confirmed NX would not be revealed or talked about at E3, and E3 2016 would focus entirely on The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, which was still untitled at that point. Nintendo fans were completely puzzled and bummed. 2016 was already a bit of a dry year, but there was hope in the form of getting an NX news blowout that summer. That never happened. We'd have to wait even longer for concrete info. A few days later, Nintendo filed a trademark for the term 3D Swap, which a few people speculated was the official name for NX, but of course that wasn't the case. May 2016 was the month rumors started to come out about the Nintendo NX utilizing cartridges as its main format instead of discs. This rumor continually kept on getting more and more real as when Nintendo later trademarked the title Breath of the Wild, not only did it mention video game discs, but cartridges as well. Emily Rogers later dismissed the earlier rumor of the NX using x86 architecture and described the power of the device to be much more comparable to the Xbox One rather than the PlayStation 4. Later in May, Nintendo's president Tatsumi Kimishima stated that the NX was neither a successor to the Wii U or 3DS and would basically be a new way to play games, not a replacement. Sure. You ever have the lust to play Zelda on a soap dish? We've all been there, and this leak tried to please that primal instinct. This is obviously based off the patent Nintendo filed, and I gotta say, this is really well done and seemed relatively real. Of course, patents rarely look this close to the final product, but I gotta say, it looked fucking stupid enough to be real. June 2016, the month of E3. Early on, it was reported that the NX would be VR compatible. Of course, currently, that is far from the case. E3 rolled around and Nintendo finally gave basement loads of footage of The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Everything shown of the game here was simply the Wii U version, with no NX version in sight. However, Just Dance 2017 was announced for NX, and everybody issued a sigh of relief. A Reddit user pointed out a trademark for Resident Evil 7 mentioning cartridges implying it could come to the NX, but it was also pointed out that other Resident Evil games from the past included mentions of these as well. July 2017 was the biggest yet for the Nintendo NX, as we finally started to get information from trustworthy sources. A major announcement regarding the platform occurred on July 22nd, 2016 at the Sonic the Hedgehog 25th birthday celebration at Comic-Con, where two Sonic games were revealed, Sonic Mania and Project Sonic 2017. Sonic Mania was initially revealed only for the PC, PS4, and Xbox One, but Project Sonic 2017, later titled Sonic Forces, was announced to be coming to all three of those platforms, plus the NX. 
This made me wonder, does this mean the NX is powerful enough to easily house a multi-platform release like this? To be fair, Sega has released Sonic games for current and past generations of consoles simultaneously before. Sonic Unleashed released for the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3, while also releasing for the PlayStation 2 and Wii. But the fact that Sega was confident that their next big 3D Sonic game would run on the NX made me feel like this wasn't just going to be a repackaged Wii U. Eurogamer decided to spit out the biggest leak regarding the NX yet. They reported Nintendo NX was a portable system with detachable controllers that hooked up to a docking station, allowing it to display on a TV. This was spot on, and based on the mock-up Eurogamer provided, it's obvious this was the real deal nowadays, and was the most concrete leak we had gotten up to this point. Takashi Mochizuki of the Wall Street Journal brought up that the NX would be compatible with Nintendo smartphone games, even though we have yet to really see that happen. August 2016, an anonymous developer threw out a rough sketch on the design of the NX, showing off stuff like the share button and the separated D-pad, featuring four separate buttons rather than the cross design Nintendo is known for. The developer also described how the controllers detached via a button on the back. Also, for some reason, the placements of the cartridge slot, power, headphone jack, and TV connector, and the SD card slot are reversed on the sketch but it's totally whatever. It was later discovered Nintendo filed a patent for detachable controllers in a manner similar to the leaks describing them. Another patent was filed describing an IR camera that would be able to measure distance and hand gestures, exactly what appears on the bottom of the Nintendo Switch's right Joy-Con controller. Let's Play Videogames.com reported on the detachable controllers of the NX being more than meets the eye as they were told the controllers featured motion control and force feedback. Obviously the Joy-Con controllers feature motion capabilities and the force feedback is definitely the HD rumble. However, they were also told that Wii remotes would be compatible with multiplayer titles. While that is definitely possible with a software patch as Wii remotes can be synced with Bluetooth, it hasn't happened and I can't foresee it ever doing so. September 2016 comes about and we are only a month away from the Nintendo NX being revealed, but being a Nintendo fan during this time was every bit of the word torture. Nintendo kept on saying, we'll reveal the NX in 2016, and every single day felt overwhelmingly, why haven't they revealed the NX yet, E. Emily Rogers posted what to expect from the final NX product on her blog, everything from the ho-hum battery life, 32GB of internal storage, 6.2 inch multi touchscreen with no stylus, the console being region free, it was all pretty spot on. A journalist who predicted the existence of Pokemon Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire teased that the 3DS game Mario Sports Superstars was coming to NX. Yeah, that's no. Nintendo's Amiibo website updated and revealed that the Amiibo figures for Breath of the Wild were set to be released on March 4th, 2017. Now, Amiibo figures generally release alongside the game, therefore, which implied not only Breath of the Wild was coming out on March 4th, but as a launch title for the NX. In the end, it was off by one day, as Breath of the Wild and the Switch launched on March 3rd, but... Still. Rumors were abuzz when a supposed Foxconn employee posted a sketch of what the NX was. It included a handheld that connected to a docking station which housed a hard disk drive, cartridge slot, and seemingly boosted the system's performance. And then this was later completely debunked as the image was initially posted in a forum talking about NX design concepts. The Nintendo Focus, a leak posted on 4chan, credibility is an understatement. Games would include Breath of the Wild, a new Super Smash Bros alongside a remake of Smash Bros Melee, F-Zero Squared, re-releases of Pokemon on Gold and Silver, a new 3D Mario game, Animal Crossing Election Year, Pikmin 4, Ports of Pokemon Sun and Moon, and a new IP from Goodfield Pilio released on March 10th, 2017. You see, I wouldn't have believed this if it wasn't words on the internet. I mean, it's words on the internet. The credibility credits itself at that point. The final month of the worst waiting any fan could ever endure totally. October 2016. Effin' people were getting super pumped about Nintendo's NYC store closing off a section for a special event because, whoa, whoa, wait, that could be an NX reveal and it ended up being a f***ing Disney Magical World 2 event. A lot of people were talking Beyond Good and Evil 2. The sequel was presumably cancelled after being absent for years, but this month, rumors indicated that it was entering development, with some rumors stating it would be either on the NX or even an NX exclusive. A rumor about the packaging and the price of the NX floated around about a week before the reveal. Apparently, the final name was simply NX, and the tagline was, Interact with your games on the go. A basic model would be priced at 300 and a bundle of some sort would be priced at 400 yikes and a half. The investment banking firm McCary Group stated that Nintendo would reveal the NX the following week at a high price. This was on October 14th, and with the reveal happening on October 20th, they at least got that right. However, the price of the Nintendo Switch wasn't revealed until January. On October 19th, Emily Rogers stated that an NX announcement was coming incredibly soon, and wouldn't you know, blam. Nintendo tweeted out that on the morning of October 20th, 2016, we'd finally get a glimpse at their next system. And finally, October 20th comes, and the Nintendo 
Nintendo NX is no more as it became the Nintendo Switch, revealed via a three minute trailer on Nintendo's YouTube channel. Now that wasn't everything rumored and leaked about the Nintendo Switch before it was revealed, it was mainly the good majority, the main ones. Rumors are something anybody can post, so if I actually went over everything, we'd be here all honking year. In the end, the point of this was to highlight how much it f***ing blew to be a Nintendo fan back then. Well, that was a hearty dose of garbage. I'm getting kind of tired of seeing all these leaks, so I decided I'm going to Washington, D.C. to propose a leak tax to Congress. Wish me luck. It went really great! Everybody listened to me, and at the end they gave me this slick coin, and they told me to come again next time, so I think we have this one in the bag, son of a bitch that was an AA meeting. Hey all Scott here, and I have insider info. Watch. On August 4th, 2018, I leave the shower running overnight. Fuck! Nintendo Directs are roughly 30 minute long pre-recorded presentations live streamed every now and then that allow Nintendo to go in depth on details about previously announced games or straight up announce all kinds of things. Everything from a new Smash Brothers game to hemorrhoids. Ever since their introduction in 2011, they've been some of the most anticipated events for Nintendo fans. It's always a treat to know when I'll be playing Disappointment this year. I remember when Direct started up. Back then, they were nothing special. You know how some companies are trying to do their own Nintendo Direct type thing, like inside Xbox, and it's just terrible because they don't really announce anything at all? Yeah, Nintendo Directs were basically that when they first premiered. <laughs> Life is fleeting. Back then, the pure speed of a Nintendo Direct was absolutely miserable. It was mostly the host, whether it be Reggie or Awada, very slowly going over what the trailer you just saw was. The pacing did get much better, but this was definitely the growing pains era of Directs. Over time, they definitely beefed up in terms of presentation and notoriety as Nintendo started to jam bigger and bigger announcements in them. The best year for them, hands down, was 2013. There was like a new one every single month, each packed to the brim with new announcements. 2014 had a lot less of them, but they were still a good time. 2015 to 2016? were definitely the darkest years in terms of Directs. Sadly, Satoru Iwata passed away in July of 2015, and it definitely felt like Nintendo was trying to figure out what Nintendo Direct was without Iwata. We didn't get a whole lot of presentations during this time, and when we did, they usually came with the announcement that we should just all give up already. However, they've revved back up again with the launch of the Nintendo Switch in 2017, and they're back in action with a much slicker presentation, now hosted by Yoshiaki Koizumi. While they weren't originally huge events, the discussion surrounding recent and upcoming Nintendo Directs increases all the time. It's fun to be excited over these things, and then be devastated at how disappointing they turn out to be, and then be excited about the next one, I'm already disappointed. We've gotten a lot of good ones, and some ones, but regardless, Directs have always had excitement built up over them. So much so that fans make it their goal to try and form their own dream Nintendo Direct in a Word document, and then proceed to put it online, claiming to work at Nintendo. Yes, the coveted Nintendo Direct rumors and fake leaks, mostly originating from our favorite after-school website, 4chan. We ain't looking at the for reals these leaks, you know, the things that were posted online that eventually did happen, no thank you, we're looking at the rumors people posted that had no business being real. Now, of course, a while back, I took a look at some rumors and leaks surrounding E3, the Nintendo Switch, and Smash Brothers. Consider this to be the reckoning of that very moment, because Nintendo Direct rumors can encompass all three of these things. These are leaks that deserve to be critiqued. Hello everybody and welcome to Critique That Leak, the only show that encourages you to rev up those Microsoft Word documents because these... leaks... can be done by anybody. Now even you can become famous for not working at Nintendo. Over the past few years, there have been more and more made-up rumors on the made-up contents of made-up Nintendo Directs that never happened, so let's take a look at them and see if they deserve to be taken seriously, or just kidding, let's see how embarrassing these things can possibly be for the lying garbage men who posted them. There are two types of fake leaks surrounding Nintendo Directs. We have the actually extremely well done ones that feature high quality renders and or animation, and then the rest of them. Today on Critique That Leak will be look taken at the 99%. Many were vocally shrieking about the supposed leaked direct lineup for July 22nd, 2018 simply because two of the things listed were officially announced. Funko announced they'd be making Pokemon figures, and Nintendo announced Mario Kart 8 Deluxe would continue to receive updates. This leak details that Nintendo would announce a new partnership with the Abstinence Factory and squared out a new DLC pack for Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. We'd also get a new Super Mario Bros. game for Switch entitled New Super Mario Bros. World, which I keep trying to tell myself is a bad title, so many Mario games have the word world in them. It'll confuse people, but I kinda sorta like the title. Mario Maker for Switch comes with a stylus, Mother 3 comes to the 3DS in a remake entitled Mother 3D, 
Mortal Kombat X, Kingdom Hearts 3, and Fallout 76 come to Switch, Star Fox Racing, Mega Man 11, and Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee. And j Jesus, there's more. Final Fantasy 7 and Cuphead are coming to Switch? It's pretty obvious this was a bunch of serpent grease. Firstly, this direct landed on July 22nd, a uh, Sunday. Normally, Nintendo Directs here in the West land in the middle of the week to make it easier for websites to report on the news. Secondly, this list is just too much. Has this leaker even seen a Nintendo Direct? Seriously, this is non-stop big new game reveal after big new game reveal. There's no time to breathe here with like a spotlight on a previously announced indie game or something. We'd be lucky to get two of the things listed. Nintendo would easily spread all these announcements across the year. Also, why would they announce a new Super Mario Brothers game alongside Mario Maker? The thing is, people don't care both in terms of those who make a fake leak and those who believe a fake leak. People get excited over anything posted in a list format on 4chan. I can post my grocery list and say I work at Nintendo and somebody will make a YouTube video about it. Well, if so many of these things are easily debunked within seconds, then what makes a good fake leak? Nothing really, most of these are pretty raw. Oh, Legend of Zelda Shard of Nightmare, no way! That was my latest search on WebMD! I mean, we can look at examples like Artsy Omni's Rayman for Smash Brothers leak, this Nintendo Switch update, or even this Isle Delfino and Mario Odyssey one. And these are all high effort, high quality fake leaks, and while they do have inconsistencies, they are rather believable at first, second, or even third glance. They're all well done, to put it lightly. But these are few and far between here in Internet County. Most of the time we're dealing with Lists. But I'll be honest, even when most rumors posted online are lame, there's just something magical about a dumb fake leak. Every time a cobbled together Smash Brothers menu screen or Nintendo Direct list gets slapped onto the web, I enjoy taking a look at them, not because I believe them to be true, but it's fun to see just how bizarre they can get, how real or fake it looks, how well the leaker can make something seem believable. And they can actually get your mind a raisin about games you might want to see in the future, like that rumor about a Diddy Kong Racing 2. The problem with these lists stem from the fact that they have the audacity to claim they're real. Instead of just posting them online and saying, hey guys, I whipped this up real quick in Google Docs, you think it sounds cool? Ah, just take a blurry picture off screen and that'll get people talking. You see, I like looking at these contents right here, you know, the ideas behind these rumors. The problem is the people who want these things to seem believable think it's believable for people to take pictures like this. A Nintendo Direct in January 2018? I've heard that one before. This list highlights the game Fire Emblem Mutiny, which this title is at least a metric 12 times better than the actual Fire Emblem Switch game's name we got. What is that? Purple and Gold Joy-Cons, Box Boy Collection, which I assume is on the Switch, Bayonetta 2, Yoshi's Pop-Up, Street Fighter, Kirby, Octopath Traveler is renamed Octopath Voyage, Final Fantasy XV, Nier Automata, and Grand Theft Auto V. Everybody was going nuts for a potential Nintendo Direct in January 2018, and this does a good job of being disappointing enough to be believable. Hey, Final Fantasy XV, Nier Automata, and Grand Theft Auto V are all awesome third-party titles for the Switch, but overall this Direct would have been a bit lighter in terms of pure Nintendo games. I'll gladly say, while this isn't the most exciting rumor to me personally, it was definitely one of the more believable ones. Folders! This guy's thinking out of the box! You see, everybody else does a list. This guy does folders, like he's working for Nintendo PR, he has a hard drive full of everything the Direct's got, including WarioWare, Amiibo Mania, where WarioWare is spelled with a space in between the words, which isn't how WarioWare is spelled. You smell that? We're in 2015, where people actually took these things seriously. A new Lost in Blue game for 3DS? Well, that's at least bizarre enough to work. Project Steam? Yeah, the game was already named Codename Steam at E3 2014. This is getting less leaky by the leak. A Bayonetta game for 3DS? Yeah, sure. For new 3DS games, this guy decided to name ports of console games new. All right, that sounds Nintendo-y enough to work. I'll give him that one. Grima's Vengeance, Mario Wii U, well, this is obviously a pretty packed direct. This one has its flaws, but I'll give it some slag. Nothing's too out of the ordinary. Outside of words on the internet, fake Nintendo Direct leaks can be so much more. For example, they can be stuff like a screenshot of King K. Rule in the Great Base stage from Melee being revealed for Smash Brothers in a Direct. Or it can be stuff like new Super Mario Brothers U and Mario Kart 8. God, shut up! Splatoon has always been a key victim in fake leaks. Ever since the first game came out, people would not stop doing these Super Mario Sunshine leaks. Looky here, tap a Mario amiibo in Splatoon and you can play as Mario. Apparently, but why is there a random Splatoon screenshot here? Is it a separate mode where you have to clean up the ink as Mario? This diagram raises more questions than answers. If you're not into Mario Sunshine in Splatoon, we can always dabble in the Sonic franchise. Mm. 
Logo mock-ups appearing off-screen just blurry enough for everybody to excuse the shittiness appear every now and then. Wario Land, Awazon's treasure. Awazon being the location from the Virtual Boy Wario Land game. Not a terrible leak, but then we have a remake of The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening. God, I love effort. Tried and true Nintendo Switch presentation 2017. Not a true Nintendo Direct, but close enough to talk about some fun logos. Apparently, this leak states that the Nintendo Switch console, Breath of the Wild, Splatoon, Mario Kart, Rabbids Kingdom Battle, and Super Mario Universe will all launch on March 17th, 2017. I will give this leak credit that the logos look nice, not necessarily the most professional in the world, but good enough. However, the title Super Mario Universe is the most overused name any fan suggests for an upcoming Mario game. Also, what the hell do I call this Mario Kart game? Mario Kart 8 Switch? Mario Kart Infinity Switch? Is the 8 on its side just an aesthetic thing now? And is it just Mario Kart Switch? That's the first no-no of any logo design, if it's confusing to even understand what the title is. Also, just my opinion, but if Kelly and Marie were both revealed as Smash Brothers characters and they both have the same Stay Fresh following their names, wouldn't it make more sense to show them in the same screen rather than separate, like Callie and Marie Stay Fresh? The mock-ups look cool, it's just believable. Yeah, right. You ever get home and you're like, I know what I'm doing tonight, Red Times New Roman Font. A new Nintendo 2DS regular edition. That's one way to run a business. The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild edition. For what? Yeah, this is gonna be a critique from me. If I had to describe Smash Brothers in eight words or less, I'd say it's random matches with some characters and mechanics, which according to this here leak is how Nintendo describes their own video game on an E3 showroom instruction list. Obviously, this list would be for people demonstrating the games at E3, so why are the descriptions written as if it's a leaker on 4chan describing what's going to be shown at E3? Huh. Nintendo Direct rumors will always be f***ing stupid, but I'd be lying if I say I don't get a kick out of taking a look at them. Not believing them, god no, let me set that straight right now. I see way too many people freak out about a random 4chan post about an upcoming Nintendo Direct, and man, if it doesn't have credibility, don't give it the time of day. Don't believe stuff immediately, you'll just set yourself up for disappointment. To all you real leakers out there, make sure you pump the brakes, man. Some teases can be all right, but you really ruin a lot of surprises. To all you fake leakers out there, put some more effort into your list, make them seem more believable. <laughs> Wait, this one says confidential on it, never mind. And that is how a leak is critiqued, and while I do think most leaks are dumb, what can I say? I love looking at these things. I actually would really like to see how a lot of these leaked Nintendo Direct lists were made. Hey y'all, Scott here. I hate rumors. Ever since the dawn of time, they've been used to spoil major reveals. And ever since, they've been primarily used to get the attention of Nintendo fans, such as this one. Nintendo's lineup for 2021. This one's fake. This is an eye exam. Oh man, the build up to a system's reveal and release is unlike anything else. Just that feeling of excitement. It's familiar to your old console, but bigger and better and all new. But because of that, uh, rumors start floating around. You start to ask some questions. Can it tuck me in? Pretty much with any upcoming video game console, you get fishy statements from the dark alleyways of the internet. Articles reading, yeah sure, it'll make you lunch. Some info may leak out ahead of time and turn out to be true. And then there's this. Rumors and leaks are either what keeps the excitement rolling or what kills it immediately. Every system has them, and I think it's as good a time as any to pick a console and go through the gossip throughout its life. So let's see what system we'll be scouring. Damn it! The Nintendo 3DS, a monumental leap forward for all things called 3DS. It was a Nintendo handheld, of course it did well, but its main gimmick was the glasses-free 3D screen. Now, back when this portable was announced, 3D was THE thing, as in everybody went to go see the movie Avatar in 3D and then gave up. I'd consider it to be a fad. I mean, that was one of the biggest movies of all time, so all these companies worked on a bunch of 3D-centric products like 3D TVs and 3D Blu-rays, but you still had to wear icebreakers to enjoy them. 3D glasses were almost always required to enjoy 3D content, which could sometimes ruin the magic. You take those glasses off and the screen's just a blurry mess, it kind of reinforced the idea that the 3D visuals you were experiencing were just mere illusions. So the idea of glasses-free 3D was incredibly intriguing. Not needing glasses made way for experiences to be so much more engaging and immersive, so it's no surprise that once the technology for glasses-free 3D became more easily implementable into consumer products, it was. Yeah, a cell phone with glasses-free 3D, it's like the clock's really there! But Nintendo was one of the first big companies to embrace the tech and their juicy new handheld system, which brings us back to 2009. In 2009, the Nintendo DS was hitting its stride with multiple revisions and an enormous library of titles. However, 
it was five-year-old hardware at this point. People were starting to ask when the next generation of Nintendo handhelds was hitting the scene, a Nintendo DS2, if you will. Then Nintendo president Satoru Iwata made a brief statement on the matter to the Japanese publication Asahi Shimbun, revealing, The Nintendo DS successor will have highly detailed graphics and it will be necessary to have a sensor with the ability to read the movements of people playing. Just like that, huh? I mean, on the surface, it doesn't seem like much info. Like, of course, your next handheld is gonna have better graphics, and yeah, it was probably a given it was gonna have motion detection in it, but come on, this is Nintendo. They don't even like revealing if their employees go to the bathroom. I wanna just let out two facts about their next handheld, and that there is, in fact, going to be a next handheld. Nintendo then barged in and said, you don't know that. This interview was later clarified to be a misinterpretation of Nintendo's future plans by a spokesperson for the company. See, that's the Nintendo I know. Claiming what somebody said was false to then later be the liars themselves. Like, of course they're making a successor to the DS. Of course it's gonna have better graphics. Of course it's gonna have motion sensors in it. Why bother hiding it after Iwata said it? Iwata himself made further statements on the interview, asking if better graphics and motion sensing would be enough to sell a DS successor. You can't just have better graphics and more controls. You need something else. Sex appeal! Late 2009 to early 2009, 10, speculation started to ramp up for a DS2, with rumors that many were receiving development kits around this time, specifically the Pokemon Company. Couple that with patents Nintendo was filing, and we have ourselves articles, and two of them. So Nintendo patented Rumble technology that would be transmitted to the DS Stylus Pen, so if you hit an enemy in a touchscreen-based game, you'd receive feedback in the stylus. And on top of that, some new cartridges. Now, the Stylus Rumble never came to be, but the new DS cartridges, well, the 3DS did have differently shaped game cards, but barely. They were designed this way to ensure they fit in a Nintendo 3DS, but don't fit in a Nintendo DS. We never got these overly long cartridges like this pan suggests. However, I believe this could be in relation to DS development cartridges, which were longer than retail ones. As 2010 made its way through the door, rumors persisted about the next DS, one guy deciding to snoop around the Game Developers Conference that year to find as much info as he could. His findings? I'll take anything at this point. Basically, he discovered the system was going to be more powerful than the Nintendo DS. Shut the f up! Graphical capabilities were comparable to the GameCube, and while the system would have two screens again, they would be bigger, have a better resolution, and the gap between them would be shrunken significantly. I mean, a lot of those did happen with the 3DS, but a shrunken gap between the two screens? I don't think so. People were asking developers what they wanted out of a new DS, with one saying cellular and GPS. That's the one thing I wanted to worry about playing pack picks, a data plan. But I mean, why would Nintendo announce a DS2? It was early 2010, they were just about to release a brand new DS revision, the TSI XL. I don't get you. On March 23rd, 2010, Nintendo officially announced a successor to the Nintendo DS. It wasn't called the Nintendo DS2, it was the Nintendo 3DS. I made this shirt for nothing? This was done via press release, thus the system wasn't shown. In fact, the name Nintendo 3DS was considered temporary at the time. The big reveal was that it had a screen capable of displaying 3D imagery without the need for glasses, which was actually teased by Iwata during an interview a few months prior. The question related to his stance on 3D gaming. His response was pretty much, f*** the glasses. DS games would be fully compatible with the handheld, and the 3DS was supposed to be formally shown later that year at E3 2010. Of course, with the official announcement out of the way, we got a treasure trove of Photoshop. Anybody with a finger, a mouse, and an open weekend whipped up what they thought the 3DS would be. Notice how I didn't say anybody with a brain. I kid, a lot of the system mock-ups are pretty well done and crazy impressive, especially for 2010, but that doesn't mean they're above getting critiqued. Hello everybody and welcome to Critique That Leak, the show for people looking for meaning in their life. You just have to look really hard. We here at Critique That Leak take our leak critiquer titles very seriously. It's not every day somebody goes to the effort of opening up Photoshop, so we really have to embrace each and every leak we can. Who <laughs> has time to erase one word from a Zelda logo? During 2017 to 2018, there were some rumors floating around about a Link's Awakening remake heading to the Nintendo 3DS. Now, that ended up being for the Nintendo Switch, and while I do believe that remake probably started life on the 3DS, this isn't it. This guy decided to be clever and lazy. See, the title The Legend of Zelda Awakening follows the format of another Game Boy remake on 3DS, Metroid Samus Returns. I take the original title and shake the words up a bit for the remake. The problem is, Nintendo wouldn't use the original Zelda logo from the 90s with no real alterations for a new release of theirs, even if it is for a remake. However, I will put this leak up on the wall to remind me no matter how lazy I am, I could be lazier. Nintendo obviously announced the 3DS early to get ahead of leaks. When you buy millions of tiny 3D screens from a company to put into your handheld, that's probably gonna get out there. And Nintendo does like to control their own destiny. They don't like people announcing stuff for them. So they announced their new handheld in their own special way. 
This, of course, raised many questions. Rumors spread like wildfire. Developers were saying all these things about the system. EA said it was cool. Around this time, somebody asked Nintendo customer support about Golden Sun Dark Dawn for the DS, and they responded with, We can't say anything, but definitely keep an eye on the 3DS at E3 this year. Did that mean Golden Sun Dark Dawn was coming to the 3DS? I've seen dead people go farther than that story ever did. Nintendo's trademarks for the system started to become public. Terms like Nintendo 3DS Wear, now Wii Wear and DSi Wear were terms used for downloadable only games games on those respective systems. Will the 3DS have similar terminology? Will the 3DS be in widescreen? Will Animal Crossing be a launch title? Will the 3DS be cool? A blogger who supposedly had their hands on a development kit for the system posted this mock-up, which was literally just a DS with a bigger screen. It checks out. To be fair, the info shared alongside the mock-up ended up being fairly accurate, although they were unsure if it would have an analog stick. The big rumor going into E3 2010 was the report that NVIDIA was supplying Nintendo with the Tegra chip to use in the 3DS. Now, NVIDIA and Nintendo are totally swapping spit right now as they supply the chipset for the Nintendo Switch. But talks started with the 3DS. There were definite discussions to have the company power the handheld, but plans fell through. Rumors of a NVIDIA Nintendo system emerged around 2009, but were put to bed in June of 2010. Developers were asked about the system, with many saying, Oh yeah, this thing is more powerful than a Wii. Hell, we can make stuff on par with Xbox 360 games. This thing can barely play Luigi's Mansion. Nintendo's E3 2010 press conference finally brought us our first look at the Nintendo 3DS. It was fundamentally a DS inspired by a layer cake. A widescreen display, circle pad, gyroscope, glasses-free 3D, motion sensor, 3D cameras, glasses-free 3D, street pass, glasses-free 3D, Nintendo really f***ing hated those glasses. What a press conference. Everybody was jazzed about the 3DS, attendees were pumped about how the 3D actually worked. And Kid Icarus Uprising being unveiled alongside the system after so many people clamored for the series return? With Animal Crossing, Mario Kart, Paper Mario, Nintendogs, Ocarina of Time 3D, Professor Lane, Star Fox 64, Steel Diver, f***ing Steel Diver! And numerous classic games being demonstrated on it, this was going to be an amazing handheld. The 3DS's design was near final at the show with some slight tweaks. For example, the circle pad was color-coded to the system, and it wasn't actually called the circle pad. Say hello to slide. But of course, with so much excitement came misinformation around this time. Rumors of achievements and voice chat being implemented alongside the ability to copy games to the system's memory spread around. Leaks of a release date in November 2010, or just many days in general, I swear literally there was a rumor of it releasing in every month of 2010. Some Nintendo developers hinted to Wario making an appearance on the 3DS, 3DS. I hope they winked after saying that. Nintendo's European website stated Paper Mario for 3DS was releasing on March 25th, 2011. Give or take a year and a half, they weren't that far off. But in actuality, while that was the incorrect date for Paper Mario, that ended up being the exact day the Nintendo 3DS launched in Europe. This era of the 3DS was filled with developer interviews basically saying, man, could you imagine this game on the 3DS? Like Devil's Third. Keep telling yourself that. Nintendo interviews were actually very telling in this age. Hideki Kono pretty much said, yeah, I can see a Luigi's Mansion sequel on 3DS. Less than a year later, how did he get away with that? Miyamoto teased that Super Mario World would make a return on the 3DS. I have no clue what he meant by that. Like the original game? A remake? A return to that world? A 3D version of Mario World? Because some of those sort of happened, but I have no idea what he was talking about based on this interview. The trademarks Nintendo filed came to light, revealing the names Cross Pass and titles with 3D in them. Uh, these definitely became a lot of the built-in software for on 3DS, like Street Pass and the AR games. Specs were rumored alongside backlit buttons, no. So this footage of the cancelled game My Garden had this lower quality CGI model of the 3DS, and because of that, the buttons looked illuminated. I find absolutely no reason to backlight four small buttons on anything with 3D or S in the title. The latter half of 2010 was filled with a lot of stuff like this, speculation on this thing we already knew quite a bit about. It was just a matter of waiting for it to actually release at this point. Lots of rumors of the system's release date or release window floated around constantly. However, one of the last news stories of the year was the rumor that the Monster Hunter series was jumping platforms. It was primarily a PlayStation franchise at this point and did tremendously well over there. But with the 3DS looming over, Capcom CEO hinted that with the release of the new system, especially after Monster Hunter Tribe was a Wii exclusive, the series may find a new home. Of course, that happened. Now all we had to do in 2011 was wait for the system to get into somebody's hand. That was quick. So these logos made the rounds in early 2012 and were supposedly a set of Zelda titles, one called the Ice Prophecy and one called the Fire Prophecy. Obviously being a dual release puts these in line with Oracle of Seasons and Ages from the Game Boy Color. 
I gotta be honest, at first glance, there's not a ton to pick apart with these ones. They're fairly well done. However, somebody who spoke Japanese came forward and stated that the kanji used in the titles were nonsensical. The leaker obviously used Google Translate or something to create the Japanese text. As somebody who doesn't speak Japanese, I gotta say, what a f***ing idiot. Somebody swiped a 3DS off the production line and yup, they sure had a camera with them. Now before the system released, Nintendo showcased the prototype of it and... I'm sorry I ever doubted you. Pikmin for 3DS was listed by some random retailer, and while Pikmin for 3DS was announced five and a half years later, I don't think they had that much foresight. The 3DS ended up launching to an overwhelming, this is just okay. The launch item wasn't terrible, I mean, there was stuff to play, but come on, you can make the argument Camp Soap is stuff, calling these games stuff is generous. B-tier titles, nothing amazing, especially from Nintendo themselves. Like, holy sh**, Pilot Wings, Nintendogs, and Steel Diver? Did they really expect anybody to unironically go, holy sh**, Pilot Wings, Nintendogs, and Steel Diver? But people knew the goods were coming eventually. Ocarina of Time 3D, Star Fox 64 3D, a Mario 3D platformer, Mario Kart, things were looking up. People were excited for the future of the system, and because of that, let's talk one of the biggest rumors in the early days of the 3DS, the Nintendo 3DS Lite. A redesigned and refined version of the handheld in a similar fashion to the Nintendo DS Lite. Basically, people were waiting for the 3DS to get out of those growing pains and have a way better model. Everybody was saying, yeah, that's great. Where's your hotter sun? Better battery life, better screens, better 3D effect, better design, a second circle pad, just a few things people were wanting. A new 3DS with a second circle pad was always talked about, and that was primarily because around this time was when Sony announced the successor to the PSP, the next generation portable NGP, featuring not one, but two two reasons to not buy a 3DS. People just automatically jumped to the fact that the 3DS needed a second stick just because the NGP had one, and due to all this, Nintendo had to respond to the press about a new 3DS model before the first model even came out. But they may have had to ask that because of the light launch of the system. I mean, what else was the press going to ask Nintendo? Bust a move universes on the 3DS, how does that make you feel? Games and news were sparse leading up to E3 2011 that summer. I mean, Mario and Sonic at the London 2012 Olympic Games for the 3DS was leaked via a Czech press release, please say holy shit. Please say holy shit. Most leaks and rumors had to do with retailers accidentally listing games before they were to be officially announced. Uh, Rayman Origins and Sonic Generations had the hardest time staying a surprise, kept getting listed multiple times before their announcements, especially Sonic Generations for 3DS. Sega themselves accidentally included it on an earnings report, quickly said, oh god, removed it, announced it like a month later. Now one of the big games we were looking forward to seeing more on was the 3D Mario game for 3DS announced at the Game Developers Conference of 2011. And right before E3, this screenshot circulated around and it was just just a Photoshop of another game, but hey, at least it was news about the 3DS. E3 2011 happened, and the 3DS definitely had a fair amount of coverage. We got trailers for Super Mario 3D, Mario Kart 3D, Kid Icarus Uprising, and Luigi's Mansion 2 was fully unveiled, but that didn't prepare us for Battlefield 3 on the 3DS being listed by EA Portugal. However, E3 2011 was definitely focused on Nintendo's new home console announcement, the Wii U. It was announced, and that's all I can say about the legacy of this system. During that summer, the 3DS was hurting hard. Sure, Ocarina of Time 3D came out, but it didn't do enough to turn around the slow sales for the system, so Nintendo had to make the difficult decision to cut the price from $250 to $170. To make the price cut sting that much less for those who bought a 3DS near launch, Nintendo announced that 20 NES and Game Boy Advance games would be given to them for free, with some titles being announced right there on the spot and others being announced at a later date and Nintendo kept accidentally saying Mario 3 was going to be one of them, and it wasn't. But easily, the biggest rumor in the summer of 2011 was that Nintendo had something up their sleeves. They heard people were complaining that the 3DS only had one circle pad, and a rumor popped up that they would be releasing an attachment for the handheld that upped that one to two. This rumor was accompanied by one that stated Nintendo was going to release a new 3DS model in 2012 that would de-emphasize the 3D alongside a new design and name. Now there was a new 3DS model in 2012, the Nintendo 3DS XL. It was none of this. I mean, it was a new design, there were different elements to it, but when you get down to it, the 3DS XL was basically just a bigger 3DS, so not a radically new look or anything. This rumor, however, perfectly describes the 3DS model Nintendo released in 2013, the Nintendo 2DS. No 3D screen, completely new design, different name, they got the release year wrong, but I wouldn't be surprised if this is what they were talking about. But back to the second circle pad, more reports popped up pertaining to it, including many claiming it would be revealed in the Japanese magazine Famitsu alongside Monster Hunter Tri-G. A description of the device leaked out when the Famitsu article came? 
What the hell is that? Finally, a soap dish for my 3DS. This thing was a behemoth, but it was a necessary behemoth. This was made specifically to combat criticism of the 3DS compared to the upcoming NGP by Sony, finally renamed to PlayStation Vita, and to also lure in more traditional games, more stuff like Metal Gear and Resident Evil. I believe this thing was made just to shut people up about the 3DS needing a second stick, because when it came out, that's all you can really say about it. It came out, it was barely supported, and nobody bought it. And one sec, I know some people bought it, you don't have to tell me. Scott, I bought the Circle Pad Pro, I go to bed with it every night. A rumor floated around that Xenoblade developer Monolith Soft was working on a 3DS title, and it was a threequel, the third title in a beloved series. This obviously pointed to a third buying Kaidos game, as that was one of the only Monolith Soft series that could have gotten a third game but nothing happened. Monolith Soft did develop the Project Cross Zone games for the 3DS, and Xenoblade was brought over to the new 3DS in 2015, but other than that, they didn't do all too much on this system. As fall came around, Super Mario 3DS and Mario Kart 3DS were both given names. And they could have been worse. And when full-blown artwork of Mario 3D Land was revealed, many with keen eyes discovered Tanuki Luigi was in the game! Fans discovered what Nintendo was too scared to reveal. Following the Nintendo 3DS Lite, we have one of the other big rumors that persisted constantly, the Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask 3D. After Ocarina of Time 3D, a remake of that game's sequel seemed like a no-brainer. Pretty much every interview with Zelda producer Eiji Numa contained a question about a Majora's Mask remake on 3DS. Fan campaigns and consistent teasing occurred for years. Nintendo knew how much people wanted this, and would put Easter eggs into games or bring it up during interviews. But it was always eclipsed by the rumor that Sonic Generations 3D Yes, make it delayed to 2012. It didn't, but still. During the Majora's Mask 3D hysteria from 2011 to 2014, various rumors came out about the game's existence. Retailer listings, hints from Nintendo. It was a game that just had to come out at some point, and I specifically remember retailer listings would use fan box art sometimes. And I will take this as an opportunity to say this box art was really good, but I like the fan box art that was more in line with Ocarina 3D. I am a big supporter of that. But here we have some fan art that some people took as a real Majora's Mask 3DS XL, purple and all. The perfect color for a Majora's Mask themed system, and what Majora's Mask system did we get? I'm glad I'm colorblind. While talking Majora's Mask, Anuma confirmed a new Zelda game for 3DS was being worked on, and later on in another interview stated that there were talks about a 3D Link to the Past remake. They would not let up about Link to the Past on 3DS, with talks of a remake and even potentially a sequel. Looking back, it's obvious why they wouldn't shut up about it because they were making it. Honestly, even when Nintendo's pretty blunt about this kind of stuff, they still surprise me. Nearing the end of 2011, it was reported that the seventh game in a popular JRPG franchise would get an enhanced remake for the 3DS. Now, many assume it would either be Dragon Quest 7 or Final Fantasy 7, and between those two, it turned out to be Dragon Quest, which was announced a year later. And at the start of 2012, we're going in hot with something that hasn't been rumored yet. The Nintendo 3DS Lite, f*** you. Thinner and better battery life than the current model. I always felt that 2012 was a very ho-hum year for the 3DS, and it's starting with another rumor about the 3DS Lite solidifies that. Now, one thing that did leak that got people talking was the box art for Theater Rhythm Final Fantasy. In the top left corner, there was a logo for something called Nintendo Network. As more box art started popping up with this logo, many wondered, what is this? I assumed it was new branding for the Nintendo Wi-Fi connection. Nintendo would pop this logo in the corners of games that supported internet connectivity, and I wasn't wrong, Nintendo Network was pretty much that. I always like the logo and name for this. It's a shame it only appeared during this generation. Like I said, 2012 was kind of a whatever year for the 3DS. It was obvious Nintendo was really prepping for the Wii U's launch, so 3DS took a bit of a backseat. Why do I say this? We got press releases like this. Nintendo hired a spokes dog. Soul Calibur 5 was listed for the 3DS, sure. Oh, my favorite one was when EB Games had box art for Donkey Kong 3D up. They then said it was a mistake and promptly destroyed their entire stock of fake box art. When a year after this rumor, Donkey Kong Country Returns 3D was announced and the art used on this box was from Donkey Kong Country Returns. Probably doesn't mean anything, but they might've been onto something. It was reported that Nintendo was attempting to fund third-party franchise revivals on the 3DS, with one of the series being the infamous Seaman. Three years later in 2015, a Seaman 3DS game was confirmed to be in development at some point, but it ended up being canceled. That is unfortunate, because as Seamania as Seaman is, I feel like the 3DS would have been the perfect platform for it. But since that was confirmed to be in development, that means Nintendo was seeking other franchises to be revived on the system, which is pretty interesting. I know they said third party, but the developer of Seaman made Odama on the GameCube, which was published by Nintendo. Why didn't we get Odama 3D? A few months before E3 2012, other 3DS titles were being rumored, such as a companion title to Epic Mickey 2 on the system, this one being 2D entitled Power of Illusion, a follow-up to Castle of Illusion on the Sega Genesis. That was completely true. Nintendo of America went on a rampage registering websites
website domain names, and one happened to slip through. FireEmblemAwakening.com Fire Emblem on 3DS was just about to release in Japan at this time, but no word of it coming over to North America or Europe just yet. While it wasn't official for a couple more months, this was pretty blatant confirmation. And not only did their domain registrations leak, but some patents came out too! If Nintendo killed a man, it would probably leak through a patent. This one showcases a new circle pad design akin to the style of the GameCube controller stick, and this one focuses on AR technology where, for example, the game tells you, find me something blue, anxiety attack follows, find something blue, bam, you win. Now if this became anything, I'd say it was Chibi Robo Photo Finder. That game asks you to find real life objects to take pictures of to transport into the game, which is kind of the vibe I'm getting from this patent. This one shows off using the stylus to control a game without touching the top screen, so I assume this would have been a way to implement a touchscreen sort of deal to the 3D screen of the 3DS with a vibrating stylus. And no matter how useless and wasteful of money you think this idea is, why don't you try to do what the 3DS is doing? I bet you can't. Castlevania Mirror of Faith for the 3DS was rumored for E3 2012. Almost nailed it. But here we have the big one, the rumor to end all rumors, the Nintendo 3DS XL. Nikkei reported that Nintendo was set to reveal a 3DS with a bigger screen similar to the Nintendo DSi XL at E3 2012. This was accompanied by Wii U pricing info. When Nintendo said it, these rumors were false. This is Nintendo 3DS XL. What the hell happened there? If we actually look at Nintendo's response to these rumors, they said some things are incorrect. Alright, so the 3DS XL isn't something. Now going back to Fire Emblem Awakening's domain registration, you may ask, when did it officially get revealed for the states? Well, Reggie fils may got in front of some journalists at E3 2012 and proudly said, Fire Emblem Awakening's coming to Nintendo 3DS. Damn it. Apparently he wasn't supposed to say that, but he sure did. Alongside Fire Emblem, another game that was rumored to be localized at some point was Tomodachi Life, known in Japan as Tomodachi Collection. This eventually made it over in 2014, but a localization was consistently talked about beforehand. Back then, rumors of its translation started when many assumed the title over here would be Communicator Gamers Collection. Moving on. Alpha Dream, the developers of the Mario & Luigi series, filed a patent in 2012 showcasing how a character on the bottom screen of the 3DS would be manipulated to then help a character on the top screen progress through a level. This is literally Mario & Luigi Dream Team a year before it was announced. With the 3DS XL's introduction, many retailers started to promote the product, with one getting a little too excited. That's not right. Look, a second circle pad. I'm telling you, people would have killed for a second circle pad. Look at all the 3DS games I could use a second circle pad with. Tetris Axis, Tetris Ultimate, I need this. Could you imagine if you had access to a top secret Nintendo game and all you had on you was a flip book for a camera and decided to only film the title screen? It's a f***ing handheld system. If you can't film it there, pick it up and bring it to the bathroom. Now the rest of 2012 was pretty light in terms of rumors and speculation, but when 2013 came along, that's when things started to heat up. The best year in 3DS history. Every single month there was a new experience from Nintendo themselves. It was bliss. And it all started out with the announcement of a Pokemon Nintendo Direct in January. Now keep in mind, a Pokemon 3DS title had been long awaited for at this point. They kept making games for the DS when the 3DS was a thing, but before the live stream happened, many saw the keyword 3DS in the description, implying that this wasn't going to be Pokemon 2 for the Nintendo DS, this was going to be a big boy game. Monster Hunter 4 was a 3DS exclusive, but after it got a delay, rumors persisted of it all being so a PlayStation Vita version could release alongside it. Never. It's actually surprising to me that Monster Hunter never made it to the Vita, but the website that reported that can always dream. Many 3DS rumors at this point had to do with trademark filings leaking out or retailer listings just having the time of their lives. New Super Luigi for the 3DS? Why not? Angry Birds Star Wars? It sure did. Lego Friends? Lego? Of course, there was the coveted special edition systems that always seemed to be announced via ads or through store inventory systems before Nintendo could even think about making them. Pokemon X and Y systems were reported via Target's inventory, Zelda a Link Between Worlds and Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon bundles were shown off in weekly ads, this Mario & Luigi Dream Team 3DS XL floated around a bit before releasing, and by god, I remember they could not sell this for the life of them. For a special edition system, this sure went on sale a lot. This Luigi 2DS turned out to be a fake made by a fan, would you look at that? I mean, this stuff was the most exciting. 3DS speculation at the time. What, Mario and Sonic at the Sochi 2014 Olympic Winter Games is coming to the 3DS? Oh, never mind. F*** it, make a Luigi 2DS. Now, a pretty common way for games to get leaked is through the rating system. When a game gets rated, well, be prepared for anarchy. Steel Diver Sub Wars 
was ousted through these means alongside NES Remix for the Wii U. The sequel to Steel Diver was leaked through the Australian classification website. Now, I don't usually get pissed about things leaking. This was an exception. Something consistently rumored with the 3DS was legacy content from other systems being available on the Nintendo eShop. We got NES, Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and Game Gear at this point, but strangely, Reggie did say years prior that TurboGrafx-16 games would be available. I'm still waiting. And while Game Boy Advance was available to early adopters of the 3DS as a Please God Forgive Us package, they were never available to the general public. That didn't stop speculation. Pretty much everybody predicted GBA games would be available on the 3DS. In fact, a lot of things led many to believe that. Various GBA titles appeared on Nintendo of Europe's website, implying they were coming. But there were also SNES titles rumored for the 3DS. On Miiverse, the social media network for 3DS and Wii U, most games had communities you could harass, and one of them was the virtual console release for Contra 3 The Alien Wars on Wii U. Accessing this community on the 3DS would show the game running on a 3DS Excel. What does that mean? Well, Miiverse communities for virtual console games on the Wii U and 3DS always had this template going on in their banner. It was either the 3DS or Wii U displaying a screenshot of the game. So if I had to guess, I'd say this was an automatic template created gone wrong. But everything we've talked about has led to this. See, when Yoshi's New Island was coming out, a certain listing popped up online detailing a special edition Yoshi 3DS XL. This spread like wildfire and showed off an image of the system, and he said it was hideous. It was also made by a 16-year-old Scott. Yeah, I got bored one day in July of 2013 and decided to make a mock-up for a special edition 3DS box. The core idea here was to just make a box for the system. I wanted to try and mimic the design of something like the Animal Crossing. 3DS box. The 3DS design itself was an afterthought. I effectively gave a 3DS live response. And then IGN reported on this thing, and so did a lot of other sites. I felt really proud about that one. The reason my fan art was used was because a Yoshi 3DS was actually coming out, and one of these retailers just decided to Google Yoshi 3DS and uploaded the worst looking one they could find. To commemorate the experience, I recently bought the actual 3DS this listing was for. We're not enough green spots on this one, but it's still okay. Back in 2017, Nintendo announced a multiplayer Kirby game was in the works for the 3DS, and right before E3, this year's screenshot leaked, and it is one of the better ones I've seen. The overall style of the logo looks really professional, and honestly, better than some other Kirby games. Now, what are Star Knights? I don't know. It seems like they popped this into a Kirby title generator. It's on a screen! You ever see a game not on a screen? This one must be true! I don't have much to say about this one other than nothing screams a fantasy adventure game more than a big fat G on the shield. Yeah, the vast majority of rumors in the latter half of the 3DS's life really had to do with new system colors and variations. I'd argue that's because while more people had a 3DS than a Wii U, the Wii U and home console rumors in general were always more exciting. That's actually something I noticed with Nintendo in general. They always hold their home console stuff in higher regards. You always see them nostalgically reminiscing about their home consoles. Their handhelds don't get nearly as much love. Case in point, what was the big 3DS talk at the time? Oh, there's a sea green 2DS coming? A Smash Brothers 3DS was leaked in flyers. I mean, that was pretty interesting. It was better than the rumor about codename Steam getting a demo via free trading cards, woo. Right before E3 2015, a trailer for the 3DS version of Hyrule Warriors was accidentally uploaded early to Tech Koi's YouTube channel. And during that summer, it was uncovered that Mercury Steam, the developers behind Castlevania Mirror of Faith, pitched a Metroid 3DS title to Nintendo. It happened. In March of 2016, a random retailer advertised new budget Nintendo Selects re-releases for Wii, Wii U, and 3DS early. Look at this advertisement. Why did this turn out to be true? I was excited about this though. See, Pikmin 3 was really expensive at the time, so a re-release for 20 bones, please and thank you. With the 20th anniversary of Pokemon on the horizon, many were speculating the release of a new generation for the series, mainly because Nintendo's domain names for Pokemon Sun and Moon were leaked alongside the logos, whoops. Pretty much all the Pokemon titles for the 3DS experience, just a ton of leaks. New Pokemon, new forms, just everything you can think of gets leaked when a new Pokemon's on the way. Sun and Moon were pretty much the big thing for that year, and 2016 was some year, and by some, I mean terrible. Yes, nothing was happening. Nintendo stated that this was the year they would announce new details on their next home console, the ENX, and because of that, man, nothing happened. It was just constantly waiting around for the thing to get announced. But this meant 2016 was the year of speculation. I specifically recall this rumored lineup for Nintendo's year, detailing fun facts about the NX launch, marketing budgets for 2016, alongside the full 3DS lineup of games for the year. So a lot of titles are just code names here, but they state what caliber of games they were. 
I can make some assumptions as to what these various codenames ended up becoming, but I can't say for sure. The European Nintendo Direct from March 2016 was leaked a day before it aired, and apparently, this is how Nintendo Directs are organized. The two big things outed here were Super Nintendo games for the new Nintendo 3DS and Monster Hunter Generations. Yes, Super Nintendo games on the new Nintendo 3DS. The updated models only, not the original ones, except it. Near the end of 2016, Nintendo finally unveiled the Nintendo NX, officially called the Nintendo Switch. With it being a home console handheld hybrid, many brought into question the 3DS's future. Will Nintendo continue to support the 3DS or immediately move on to the Switch? Turns out, this thing wouldn't die! Reports discussed the 3DS not being thrown to the side with the inception of the Switch. In fact, Nintendo was thinking of a successor to the handheld. Here's the thing, obviously, a 3DS successor was worked on by Nintendo. If they released one to Switch, they worked on a successor to the 3DS. There's no way they weren't thinking of something internally. Now, the successor definitely ended up being the Nintendo Switch Lite, a handheld-only variant of the Nintendo Switch. But was that what these rumors were referring to? My shoulders are gonna work overtime on this one. Miyamoto then said during an interview that a GPS was considered for the 3DS. I knew something was missing from Pack Picks! 2017 was an interesting year for the system. As the Nintendo Switch was exploding onto the scene, the 3DS was cruising along with a ton of support. They were primarily smaller projects like remakes, but still, 2017 had some of the most 3DS support in a long while. And one of the projects that made it onto the system was leaked via the eShop. Data for a game called Mario & Luigi Superstar Saga DX, supposedly a remake of the original RPG on the Game Boy Advance, was spotted on Nintendo servers. Later on, an icon and full name were discovered, Mario & Luigi Superstar Saga plus Bowser's Minions. I prefer DX. This game was later fully revealed at E3 2017, and speaking of E3, right around this time, the Pokemon Company announced their slate of projects for the year, being Pokemon Tournament DX for the Nintendo Switch and Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon for the 3DS. But leading up to this, lots of talk was surrounding a third version of Pokemon Sun and Moon for the Nintendo Switch, being Pokemon Stars. After the Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon announcements, the press site for the games listed them as Nintendo Switch titles in addition to 3DS, which ended up being a silly fucking mistake. Before the new 3DS XL was announced for North America, this banner came into GameStop and leaked online. I wonder what it could mean. In April of 2014, Nintendo trademarked the title Codename Steam, Strike Team Eliminating the Alien Menace. Nobody knew what it meant, but it wasn't until E3 2014 that Nintendo hosted a dedicated conference to announce Codename Steam for the 3DS. And fun fact, did you know Codename Steam released? Later that summer, Mega Man Legacy Collection 2 was announced in 2017, no 3DS version in sight. Which considering the first one made it onto the platform, it wasn't completely improbable to expect a 3DS version of 2 running. Digging through the code though, many uncovered the inclusion of references to the 3DS, implying a 3DS version was planned at some point. Then 2018 happened, and Kirby's Extra Epic Yarn was rumored to be a new 3DS exclusive. Take that, Nintendo! Nintendo's site labeled it as only for new Nintendo 3DS, but look at me playing it on a 2DS and feeling miserable. And that's how the 3DS ended things. With a bit of misery. The last few games Nintendo released for the platform bombed, and because of that, a rumor circulated that Nintendo canceled plans for other games to release on the system, like a new Fire Emblem remake. It's unfortunate, but let's be honest. Most have moved on to the Nintendo Switch, and I'd rather see Nintendo's resources for game development go towards a system that more are playing. As cool as some of the later releases in the 3DS's life were, they didn't do as well as they could have if they released on a system that more people were excited about and playing more consistently at the time. You know what? After going through all that, I think I might have changed my mind on rumors. They can be pretty fun. From this day forward, I will only believe rumors, and if those rumors ever become facts, Welcome.